What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. And you know, one of the things that we observe from supporting thousands of students, particularly with maths, is that you know, it can often be really hard to break what we call the band six wall. And that is, we see a lot of students for maths uh, you know, working, getting really solid, maybe you know, band five results, high band five results, and they struggle to just crack that wall across into the band sixes. And so today I'm gonna to be chatting with Blaze who managed to do this during his HSC. So Blaze experienced you know, the band five wall of, of working hard and getting solid band five results, um, but then not quite cracking into the band six. And he made some changes and was able to end up scoring a band six result. He ended up scoring an incredible 97%. Uh, for advanced maths. And so we're gonna find out from Blaze today what he did, you know, what were the process and the steps that he took to take his results from a solid, respectable band five for advanced maths and break through that band six wall to end up scoring 97%. So welcome Blaze, how are you going? I'm good, thank you, how are you? I'm good, that's good to hear. Now, um, I guess first of all, um, you know, uh, what, you know, I know you reached out to Art of Smart across the, the year 12 journey. What prompted you initially to reach out for some support for maths? So I think for my first test, like for year 11, I was like getting like 90, like 93, 94%, which was good. But then for my first test that I did for year 12, it went to 89. And I think for the next test, it went to like 85 or 86. Okay, so you were sitting in that band five zone again, right? But I think because I was giving my results to my mom and she and she's seen this happen before where I start off well and then I just drop and if I don't get help then I just drop and then soon I'm refailing like my tests. And so my mom was a bit concerned so she put me through to Art of Smart to get some help as well. Okay, awesome. And so then, you know, you've had this trajectory of scoring some band sixes in, in year 11, knowing what it feels like. Yeah getting some of these band fives and, and clearly as well, I guess the trajectory going the wrong way. So there was perhaps a sense of not knowing how to turn it around. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what did you end up doing? I mean, you were working with Shargan, one of our team uh, yeah. for advanced maths. Um, what was the approach you guys took to try to turn things around and, and get you back up into that band six for advanced maths? Well, I think for us, it was covering the content quite quickly because it was only advanced maths. We could sort of smash through it quite quickly. Because what level of maths did you take overall? We perhaps should highlight that. Were you taking advanced or were you taking extension one? Just, just advanced. So I had all the time to concentrate, okay. which was a smart decision. So yeah, so it was just advanced. So we could accelerate through and learn all the content. And then after that, I was sitting, you know, trial papers. So this was around like midway between term two, term three. And I was just sitting trial papers and bringing it to her and showing her how I was losing marks. So, and I think the main thing that we saw was that I was losing marks on like sort of the later questions where they get sort of tricky and they pull strange stuff on you to make you lose marks. And so what I did with Shagan was um, she picked out like really obscure sort of advanced questions for us and, uh, and they just helped me sort of get my mindset into it. And it's sort of the same thing with physics where it was sort of like that sort of deep understanding that I sort of need to have. Like you can't really have such a deep understanding in maths, especially advanced maths, but like there is sort of that understanding that you sort of need to grasp there. And so just to dive in here, it sounds like, and, uh, and I've seen this as well with so many other students for maths, that um, the difference between then a band five and a band six really turns on your ability to solve those more challenging questions in the papers, right? If you get those right, you're a strong band six result. If you drop marks on those, that's the band five. And in fact, that, that's how the papers are designed yeah. to differentiate. So um, it sounds like the approach then was going, okay, that's the reason why. So there was first a diagnosis, the reason you're not getting the band sixes and your marks are going slightly backwards is because you're not getting yeah. these challenging questions. And that's step one, diagnosis. Step two then, here was a concerted effort to go and expose yourself intentionally to incredibly challenging questions that you might get in your exams. Is that right? I was also losing marks on careless mistakes like everybody, but it was more careless mistakes than what most people were doing. So I would lose for maybe every couple of questions I lose on maybe like one mark because I didn't put a line of working in there or I'd put like a plus instead of a minus and like people are saying it's one mark but like it adds up and I was getting probably losing around seven or eight marks because of careless mistakes every time and so I think on top of the challenging questions that I did with Shaken, it was just also doing basic questions as well to make sure that I wasn't losing marks in it and so as soon as you cancel out cancel mistakes then it's just um, as soon as you cancel out the careless mistakes it's sort of just pushing towards understanding the theory behind all the 
questions there, so yeah, it doesn't get too right. difficult. So it's like a three step. We've got diagnosis, yeah. which identifies careless mistakes and challenging, yeah. and then it's dealing with challenging questions through exposure to them, right? And Shagan yeah. finding all these trippy challenging questions and getting you to work through them and, and showing you if you get stuck, and then sorting out careless mistakes by doing some some questions that were you were you targeting ones that you would make careless mistakes on in prior assessments and then focusing on getting exposure to those or what were you doing because I think careless mistakes is the biggest challenge that students experience yeah. um, what specifically did you do to try to deal with those careless mistakes so each time I finished I would mark the paper and then I'd circle where I got the careless mistakes wrong as so I, I did all my stuff in like loose leaf paper and then I'd staple it together and on the top I write in red pen the careless mistakes that I made for example be like I didn't integrate this one properly or I'm struggling with like differentiation for this test or um, struggling with finding volume. And so when I just did that over time, like I knew what to look for. So next time I set a pass paper, I think, okay, I just, I just gotta look out for this, for this kind of question now. And then when I did that, it exposed other mistakes that I, was, that I was making before. So it was just like applying that same thing until like everything was all patched up. Awesome, and so it's, it's interesting because something that we share with students is a mistake book tracking your mistakes yeah. so that you've got greater awareness. And it sounds like in effect, while it wasn't collated in a book, that's in essence what you were doing. You were going through identifying, well, these are where I made the silly mistakes so that the next time you were doing a practice paper, you had this awareness of, hey, watch out for integration. If you get that integration question, watch out for that silly mistake that you made last time. Don't do it again, yes, exactly. in essence, yeah, right? And, and that approach over time has meant that you were able to minimize the silly mistakes. Because clearly, I think a 97 in your, you know, your, um, exam shows that there were no silly mistakes there. It was maybe like, you know, a question that just was a little challenging. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that's really then the approach that needs to be taken to whittle down silly mistakes, yeah. maximize marks on challenging questions. So what did your prep then look like in the lead up to your trials and HSC for advanced maths? Well, like for maths, it's all just patterns. It's just looking for patterns. So it's just, it's just rote learning everything. So just doing like crunching out like at least one pass paper every single day in the lead up to your exam. I think that just re really gets you into the right mindset. Like that, that could be, you know, a lot of pass papers. Yeah. Was that a week in, in prior to your, you know, your exam? Was it two weeks? So you were doing pass papers every day for two weeks? Every day it was like two weeks before. So for two weeks before? Yeah. Except for the HSC exam, which was like three weeks before because you've got like 18. That's right, because you've got the back and you've got... So it was a, you know, you put the work in, so it's not like things magically change by just fixing a couple of silly mistakes and some exposure to hard questions. Yeah. That clearly was the foundation that you built upon, yeah. but then ultimately it was doing the work and doing past papers frequently, marking them really critically, it sounds yeah, like. You exactly. marked every single past paper you did? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and why was that important? Because like, if you don't mark it, then you don't know like the mistakes that you're getting. Like, for, for English, like, it's just... It's different, but like for maths, you can mark it because it's just like, did you write this number? Did you write that number? Is this the answer? So you just tick. So it, it like, after you take, do your test and you mark it, it takes about five minutes. So it's not too much time out of your way. And for all the questions that you do get right, it's sort of motivation. And all the questions that you don't get right, it's like, oh, that's another, that's like a good thing. So it's identifying the mistakes that you're making now so you don't make them in the exam, yeah, as exactly. simple as that is. Um, but I think that's really incredibly powerful because I, I find that a lot of students you know, it gets, it, gets, it gets tiring to mark everything. You can start getting a bit lazy and not marking stuff, but clearly it makes such a critical difference. So, um, you know, uh, in the end, you know, to, to what extent do you think working with Shagan helped you for maths? Um, I think it was very important because like, she was an exceptionally nice person. So like, if, if you had like a mean tutor, then you, like, you walk in and you say, oh, I don't really look forward to this. But like, because she was nice, I didn't have a problem walking in and showing her my answers and saying, oh, this is what I did well and this is what I didn't do well. And then she could show me her answers and as, and as well. So it was just, it just made for like a good relationship as well as, you know, and a good relationship sounds good. So you feel comfortable in ultimately sharing what you didn't understand, which yeah, is really yeah. critical, right? If you feel like someone's gonna judge you for being stupid, yeah, exactly, yeah. you don't wanna talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, thank you. I found that most of the time in class, I'd be like, oh, a lot of these people are quite smart. Maybe I don't want to. I don't want to say my say my problems here. So I'll just wait till I come to shake. And I think that was really important. Especially, yeah. 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 Awesome. And so then, what final advice would you give for a student studying advanced maths who's, you know, wanting to, to, to get into the band sixes, or maybe like yourself, marks were slipping and and want to, wants to get back into the band sixes, right? How do you know? What, what would you say to them? What advice would you have? I think it's just it's all about hard work. 
So you just got, you have to be consistent because consistency will lead to success, right? And when you when you're consistent, you will see the mistakes that you're making, and it's all just it's all just logic. So if you're making a mistake, then you realize that you can clear that mistake up, and you find another mistake, you can clear that one up, you can clear that one up as well. So uh, altogether, it's just consistency and making sure that you put the time and the effort in. And I think the only time that you should really be getting 100% is basically on the test day because if you get 100% then you become relaxed and that's, that's something that happened to me. So it's just 100% on the day of the test. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So there you have it guys. We've just heard from Blaze. Uh, you know, what's really required to take your results from a, a band five into the band six for advanced maths? And I think he summed it up with two words, hard work um, at the end of the day. But of course there was some specific strategies in there. We heard about you know, identifying careless mistakes, doubling down on weak areas, looking at exposure to challenging questions. And so these are really specific things that you can do as well to turn your results around for maths and particularly work on lifting them if you're looking for that extra lift to take them into a band six zone. If there is any way that we can support you on your journey in doing that, get in touch with the team at Art of Smart. We've got some amazing teachers, tutors, and mentors that can work with you in a really non-judgmental environment so you can feel comfortable sharing what your challenges are to really help you get that targeted support to make the difference. Um, but remember at the end of all of this, what's critical is don't give up because as we heard in Blaze's story, even though his results started dipping and started going the wrong way, um, he was able to successfully turn them around and we know and we believe that you can do that as well.